Hi everyone, my name is Jane Nichols and I'm one of the students who completed a project with Jenny Barrington earlier this year. This presentation summarizes from the research project I completed through Engineers Without Borders and Nepal Water for Health. My project involves an investigation into rainwater harvesting systems in the regions of Nepal. The first stage of the project involves an investigation into factors affecting rainwater harvesting systems in Nepal. A water supply analysis was completed to look at how much water can be supplied to an average sized family. A water quality analysis was completed which assessed the water quality of rainwater harvesting systems and improved the quality of water for Niwa's system. Lastly, I will discuss answers to the initial questions and issues identified by NEWA and provide final recommendations. The water supply analysis looked at NEWA's rainwater harvesting system in terms of tank size, roof area and demand satisfied. Annual rainfall data was used from the Gorka district and was changed into daily data sets to be used in a water balance program called Rain Tank. Gave some ideas as to how much demand can be satisfied in an average rainfall year. However, it is important to note the results may not be completely accurate due to assumptions and limitations of available data which are outlined in the report. This first graph shows households with rainwater from a 4,000 litre and 6,500 litre tank. This shows that rainwater harvesting is quite ineffective as for the average household roof size of only 15 metres squared, only 17% of the total demand can be satisfied. Limited water supply is mainly due to the monsoonal weather patterns and the small roof size. This graph shows how much water is supplied when the tank is increased and the roof area is increased. Increasing the tank size will not significantly improve the amount of water supplied compared to increasing the roof area. You can see on the graph that up to a roof area of around 30 metres squared and an increase has almost no effect on the amount of water supplied. This graph shows the cooking and drinking demand satisfied in an average rainfall year with different sized tanks. Ensuring the roof area is at least 30 metres squared, at least 85% of a household's cooking and drinking demand can be satisfied with a 6,500 litre tank. Due to limitations in water costs uh, from Niwa's system, the water quality analysis was carried out by reviewing literature on water quality of rainwater harvesting systems and analysing Niwa's design as in the pool. Key barriers required to protect the quality of rainwater were identified and recommendations on how to improve the water quality of Niwa's system are provided. This diagram here shows the different components of a rainwater harvesting system in the first column, uh, the ways in which the water can be contaminated in the second column, and the key barriers that can be implemented to maintain the higher quality of rainwater. It is evident that maintenance is important as you can see it's a key barrier for each of the main components of the system. The key recommendations to improve water quality of the rainwater harvesting system include improving maintenance through education and by adopting the water safety plan process with each family. This will allow the family to develop a clear link between tank maintenance, water quality in the tank and family health and wellbeing. The first flush system needs to be able to divert water automatically and capture the water for reuse on the kitchen garden or other lower quality demand. Having an angled screen on the downpipe will remove debris and reduce the amount of organic matter at the tank. Cheap and effective in reducing the amount of maintenance needed and improving water quality. It is also recommended to cover abstraction taps if animals are able to lick the tap as this may also contaminate the water. 
four basic designs of first flush devices are recommended in the final report. Two designs involve a slow release valve that allows water to slowly drip out into a bucket, whilst the other two designs collect water which should be emptied after the rainfall event. The important aspects of these designs are that the first flush is automatically diverted and this water is captured to be used on lower quality demand. Further investigation and piloting of a design in the pool is needed to ensure families will actually use the design. There were a few questions and issues raised by Neela at the beginning of the project. Um, the first question was, are rainwater harvesting systems better or worse than spring or stream sources? So there are limitations in data to accurate, accurately answer this question and each system can yield varying water quality. Rainwater harvesting, however, is provided is a um, more closed system and the water quality can be controlled ensuring the key quality barriers identified earlier are implemented and operational. The issue raised was first flush devices. As mentioned earlier, four basic first flush devices are recommended for further investigation to see which design families would prefer to use. First flush de devices are most likely not being used as family members may not be around to take the end cap off at the start of a rainfall event or they are unaware of the importance of a first flush or they do not want to see the water being wasted, particularly in the dry season. First flush devices are essential in mainly and a new device should be implemented on all of Neelai's rainwater harvesting systems. The issue with rainwater harvesting systems was that communities want bigger tanks to store more water. As discussed earlier, it is more cost effective to increase the roof size instead of increasing the tank volume. Concrete use in the construction of tanks contributes to a lot of the cost but the transport limitations make it difficult to use alternatives. Ladder tanks would be easy to transport, however these storage systems are relatively new and may not be accepted by Nepali people as a drinking water source. The final question raised was what effect plastic sheeting on rooftops has on rainwater collection? Limited literature is available on this. However, it is obvious that the main concern with using plastic sheeting for rainwater harvesting was that it may not be as durable as other materials. There was no research that suggested it would significantly impact on the water quality. This simple diagram summarises key recommendations in the report. They're shown in four key areas which highlights the most important modifications that will improve the use of rainwater harvesting systems. To improve water quality of systems, it's important to improve the maintenance, change the first flush device, include angled screens on downpipes and cover obstruction taps. To increase the water supply, it's recommended to ensure roof areas are at least 30 metres square, 6,500 litre tanks are used, and rainwater should be prioritised in cooking demand, ensuring that the key quality barriers are implemented. Education on operation and maintenance should be improved, especially for women, and water safety plans should be adopted to help develop a link between maintenance, water quality and family health. Finally, monitoring and evaluation should be improved. A project evaluation manual from Rainwater Harvesting Systems has been developed by Clytie Scott from Rainwater Cambodia and could be used by NIWA. Monitoring and evaluation of Rainwater Harvesting Systems is important as this will identify any unknown issues with the system. Although Rainwater Harvesting Systems are ineffective in terms of water quantity. It can supply a high quality cooking and drinking water, ensuring that the system is properly designed, operated and maintained. 